All right, boys, change log is up. It is another day. I've got my coffee here and I'm ready to fucking rumble, mate. Oh, we can't swear in the first 30 seconds of the video. That would be a no-no. What will we accomplish today? All right, so for the longest time, this has been absolutely pissing me the hell off. Uh, trying to log things into STD out, you can't get it via Visual Studio because this output is different. Unless you call output debug string. But that's annoying as shit because all the APIs don't use that. They just print it straight to the standard out. So I want to figure out how to get standard out, capture it, maybe redirect it into this output so I can see it here, or just figure out a way of doing it in the console itself. I just have no idea how logging works, so I need to figure that out. And this is something I've needed to figure out for ages because, well, if I can't log errors on people's machines, then how am I going to debug stuff? So uh, that's a big shift ability thing that I'm going to try and focus on today. Uh, mainly because I'm actually hitting an error, but I can't see what the error is because I don't know where my output is going. Uh, so that's a pain in the ass. <laughs> uh, so what I've done, and this is kind of like my go-to solution for solving problems nowadays, is I've queried log in the Handmade Hero and I've opened up all the tabs that I think could be applicable to this problem. And I'm going to go through and try and figure out a solution to this. So we'll see how we go update i'm stupid this can all be boiled down to the classic read the fucking manual uh i didn't actually when i first grabbed this i like went in and i read like a little bit of the header and i was like oh okay this is cool i'll read this later and then i never got around to reading it but if we scroll down uh and find the description setup we have here there's some backend specific stuff where you can attach it to an existing console now that's helpful if we're running it from the powershell because now it'll actually, it'll print out the error message into the console, which is good. But that's not really what I want since I'm running it in Visual Studio. And the other thing I found was, hey, would you look at that? You can give your own implementation for the log. Who would have thought? <laughs> that's such an obvious thing, but not obvious to me, apparently. So I've just defined that and now it's printing through the uh, output debug. So I can run this. And it will give me exactly what I need. So fragment shader image count doesn't match shader description. So I'm going to go fix this. I got no idea what the fuck's going on. <laughs> it still really doesn't change the fact that I need to go through and look at all of these. I'll go through and look at them on my breaks and see how still very topical. But uh, moving on, problem solved. Uh, time to figure out the rest of this shit. <laughs> Uh-oh, look who it is. Okie dokie, it is. 8 p.m. and your boy is finished work for the day. Here is what I have been up to. Oh yeah, look at that dude. Look at those sunglasses, bro. How sick is that? All right, so you'll see this little box here, right? And what you'll notice, oh, it's an interaction box. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, my man can just pick up shit and throw it down. So that's pretty cool. If we pick up a seed and go ahead and place that down, oh, that'll grow, right? Pluck. Eh. Lovely. That is fine art. All in a day's work, eh? <laughs> Whilst doing that, I came to the realization that uh, I really just got to integrate telescope and use it as a base layer. So now I've included a very lightweight version of telescope in the engine now. So it literally just takes the some context cracking stuff for the platform, uh, base types and base math. And that's about it so far. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and I've just got my own layer on top of that. So, you know, getting some additions in. These are helpful range operations. Uh, and then we've just got operator overloading for all of the all of the common stuff. So that's pretty good. Uh, that took the majority of my day to get up and running today, just merging that in. But now that it's in, it should be nice and fast. Yeah, so this is what I did today. So we got texture flipping, telescope, entity pickup, destruction. Oh, okay, so I did a basic ID system on the, uh, on the entities. Uh, I'm really feeling quite happy with this uh, with this entity structure. That right there is pretty much the entire entity system. It's pretty much just an extremely simple and lightweight version of an ECS where you like dump absolutely all of your components into the into the entity, and then you just have like bulls to toggle them on. So you got interactable. This one's a seed. 
it renders, it has a rigid body. And you just have a big hodgepodge of soup. And it's, uh, it's quite lovely to work with. Oh no, what about performance? Uh, then for the system side of things, you literally just loop over all of the entities, right? And so this is the rigid body physics system. A lot of lines of code, I know. Uh, and you're just like, hey, is this bad boy a rigid body? If it isn't, then we're gonna continue. So for all the rigid bodies, basically, uh, it just does an update. Um, so that's one example of a system. Uh, what else we got? Uh, these are all the plants. This is how I grow all the plants. You just loop over all the plants. Uh, this is how you render all the entities. You get the idea. I've written like some kind of version of this like probably five, ten times at this point. So I'm really streamlining it and figuring out what I actually need. And this is by far the most terse one that I have so far. So that's pretty cool. The power of keeping it simple. So yeah. That's feeling pretty good, bit by bit. Slowly coming along. Uh, we'll have a finished game in absolutely no time. Anyway, I'm gonna hit the sack, as the milkman would say. Stay clapping.